always, please make sure you pause the video and attempt the question on your own before listening on. As we read this question, we notice the phrasing smallest possible value, and that type of phrasing suggests that we have a optimization problem. We're trying to minimize a particular quantity. Our first step in completing an optimization problem is to define our variables. And in this problem, that's relatively straightforward. We can let x equal the first positive number and y equal the second positive number. Next, we will have to come up with what is called a constraint equation. The constraint equation is always based on the number that's given to us in the problem, which in this case is 16. It says that the sum of two positive numbers is 16. Now, of course, sum means addition, so we could simply write the constraint equation as x added to y or x plus y will equal 16. Next, we will need what is called the objective equation. Now, in this case, our objective is to find the smallest possible value of the sum of the squares of these two numbers. So what we can do for the objective is maybe use the letter s to represent the sum, and then we're going to take the first quantity and square it, and then add the second quantity squared. So this becomes our objective equation. We'll notice that the objective equation is in terms of two variables, x and y we need to express this objective equation in terms of just a single variable, and that's where the constraint equation comes in. It's traditional to solve the constraint equation for y, and perhaps we can do that by subtracting x from both sides of this equation. And when we do that, we can see that y is equal to 16 minus x. What we'll do is take that expression for y and plug it into the objective equation. Now we have the objective equation in terms of a single variable, x. So we are prepared to calculate the, so we are prepared to move on to the next step which is to calculate the derivative of our objective equation. Now, the derivative of the s will just become s prime, and then we can use a power rule to calculate the derivative of x squared, so that would be 2x to the first power. We're gonna use a chain rule for this term where we have to pull the two down in front. We'll sort of recopy the inside of the parentheses, subtract one from the exponent, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 16, of course, is zero, and the derivative of the minus x term will become just a minus one. Indeed, we can simplify this to just negative 1. We could simplify this just a little bit. Perhaps we can multiply the 2 times the negative 1 to make a minus 2. We could then distribute the minus 2 into the parentheses. We'll collect like terms. And now we have the derivative of the objective equation in its simplest form. After finding the derivative in its simplest form, we set that derivative equal to 0 and solve for x. And after doing that, we should see that x is equal to 8. Now, we have to make sure that this value of x does indeed minimize our objective equation. And to do that, we could look at the first derivative test. And in that test, we will plot our critical value, x equals 8, at the center of a number line. We'll take a value of x that's less than 8, so perhaps 7, and also a value that's greater than 8, perhaps 9, and we'll plug them into the first derivative. We've got lots to choose from here, but let's use the most simplified version of the first derivative. So when we plug 7 into the first derivative, we obtain a negative result. Now a negative first derivative shows that the original function is decreasing on this interval all the way up to x equals 8. We'll then plug 9 into the first derivative and we will see that it comes out positive or greater than 0 which suggests that the objective function is increasing on the interval from 8 to infinity. Now from this test and this little sketch that we've made, hopefully we can see that right at x equals 8, we have indeed minimized our objective equation. So x equals 8 is the correct answer. To find y, all we have to do is go back to the equation we had solved for y and plug in the value of x, and we would see that y is equal to positive 8. Now, those are the two numbers that we were seeking, but the question, notice, says, what is the smallest possible value of the sum of their squares? So we actually need to find the sum of their squares in order to finish this problem off. And for that, we return back to the original objective equation, which was x squared plus y squared. So we can plug in our known values for x and y. And when we do that, we're going to have 64 plus 64, which gives us the sum that the question was asking for. So 128 becomes the final answer. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You're also welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.